How can we use a tree or a graph to model a maze? My name is Alan Doran. Before you start watching this video, you need to watch the videos or read your textbook to find out what is a tree and what is a graph. When you can answer these questions, it's time to continue with this video. At the top left, we can see a tree. At the top right, we can see a graph. You'll notice that the difference here is the connection between two of the nodes forming a cycle in the graph. Beneath the tree and the graph are a maze and a different maze. The maze on the left corresponds to the tree on the left. The maze on the right has a cycle and corresponds to the graph on the right. The question is, how can we go from the maze to the tree? Now, just looking at it, we can see an immediate correspondence between these pairs, between the maze and the tree, and between the second maze and the graph. Can we make any general algorithm that will allow us to solve this problem? So we'd like to be able to take any given maze and turn it into a tree or a graph as appropriate. Here we can see in this grid a simple maze there's a ladybird and it can enter the maze where it's labelled start and decide should it move towards the upper corner of the maze or should it first turn right and then move up towards what's labelled here as the skull and crossbones. To make a tree from this maze we need to consider what might be called the important points in the maze. More on that in a second. Here's the maze again. Where the question mark is, we've got what we might consider to be an important point. It's a decision point for the ladybird. It's in actual fact the only location where the ladybird has a choice about the direction to turn if it wants to continue exploring the maze. So to begin with, we can start this maze in simplest form at the question mark and just give the ladybird a single question. Should I go up or should I turn right here? And from then on, whichever direction it chooses, it just continues deeper and deeper into the maze. And we can represent this maze here as the two endpoints, the tree and the skull and crossbones, and the single choice that the ladybird has at the question mark point. So this is a very simple way of representing the maze as a tree. Now here's another tree representing the same maze. In this case I've filled in each of the intermediate points along either of the tunnels that the ladybird can explore. So when it gets to point A, it now has a choice. It can either go straight up or to the right. In this case that means going to location D or location B. And you'll see that the diagram of the tree on the right doesn't necessarily correspond in its uh, layout to the layout of the maze. What's important are the connections between each of the locations in the maze and their neighbours. So the ladybird when it gets to node A can choose to go along what is labelled in the tree as the left branch to D or the right branch to B. Now from D, if we care to consider D as a, an important point in the maze, we can give the ladybird a choice. It could either continue from D, this sort of intermediate stopping point to the tree, or it could turn back to A along the path that it's just travelled. The same is true if it took the path to B. From B it could go back to A, or it could go to C, and from C it could go to E, and from E it could turn back to C, or it could continue along the path to the skull and crossbones. So by adding all of these intermediate points to our tree, we actually have a data structure that enables decisions to be made at more places through the maze than if we just allowed the ladybird to choose a turn at point A. So this is sort of providing more intermediate stopping points. It's providing more detail about the maze. And whether or not this graph, oh, sorry, this tree or the tree we saw previously is the most appropriate really depends on the, the context. Now let's suppose we open up a new path via F that travels between the 
room, if you like, containing the tree, and the room in the maze containing the skull and crossbones. We can represent this now by adding an extra node to our tree, F, and arcs from F to the tree and F to the skull and crossbones. And this has opened a cycle in our tree, which actually makes it not a tree, it's a graph. It's a cyclic graph. So now we've got a representation of the new maze in graph form. To come up with either the tree or the maze, what we need to do is move the ladybird, or at least conceptually move the ladybird, from one position to the next in the maze, and at each point mark the name of the current location within a node. From this node we then draw arcs, each arc corresponding to one of the possible paths that the ladybird could take from its current location to other locations. We then need to travel along each of these arcs we've drawn and at the end of it we draw yet another node labelled with the location where the ladybird arrives if it follows that path. So in summary, we can construct a tree or a graph from a maze by running through the maze, visiting every single location and travelling along every single path between locations. Each new location we visit becomes a node and each new path we travel along becomes an arc in the tree or graph. When we've finished we end up with the tree or graph representing the maze. The best way to understand this is to try it yourself on a maze like you can see in the bottom right hand corner. No seriously, draw a simple maze yourself on a piece of paper and draw a corresponding maze graph or maze tree. Thanks for watching.